Good morning, this is Kathy Kaw. Thanks for coming for my demo. I'm not great with technology and I can't figure out how to reverse the camera back and forth, so I'm gonna stay focused on this piece of work here and see if we can uh, give you a little demo this morning. I'm planning on taking my canvas and showing you some techniques I've been kind of experimenting with lately with palette knives to make a sort of a chaotic ba background and then to uh, overlay my painting on the top of it. So uh, this morning, let's get started. I started with a, I used some of the uh, colored gesso that comes, I think it's from Holbein, Holbein, is that how you pronounce it? That I got from Dick Blick. And this is a medium violet uh, colored gesso canvas, eight by eight, that's ready to go. And then what I have put out on my um, pal, I'm using the disposable uh, palette paper, uh, the Simply Gray, and what I have on it right now, let me set this out so you can see what I've just kind of thrown on here to get going for my background. And I have uh, my favorite color, which is uh, dioxazine purple. I love golden paints because they have a lot of pigment. So dioxazine purple, uh, yellow ochre, uh, this is Burnt Sienna. This Titan Mars Pale is just a something I really like. And then that's just regular titanium white over there in the corner. And so um, I'm in a purple mode right now. So I really am just going to start taking any knife, I want one that can do some scraping, so anything along these lines uh, would do. And I really want to have, I'm going for values, I want maybe lighter up here and darker there, but I really want a nice good mix. So I'll start just with getting some uh, of my super dark purple and uh, just kind of scraping it around and seeing what makes me feel good. I do not have this mixed with any medium at all. And if I end up feeling like I need to do that, and I'll just start pulling off bits and kind of whipping them together just to get some new tones, which will make me happy. Can you see that? Yep, good. And um, so that came up with a real pretty color. And so I might just, I like kind of a, a little crisscrossy effect. If you've seen my work, you know that. You've seen me do that before. And so now I'll get a little of the burnt sienna and come up with a new pretty color. And then I'll just start scraping that along. And now I'll add some of this one. Now we'll start getting some lighter values in. That's not really totally mixed. And that's really okay with me. If you're a person who likes things really tight, you're probably not gonna enjoy this demo. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm just wanting to randomly place these colors. Now I'm just mixing the purple with the tight and white. I'm really just wanting some random placements of colors and uh, you have to go through a phase where it looks like nothing. And uh, it'll come together, or it'll come together enough to please me. You might not like it. <laughs> so now I'm going to start, now I've kind of laid down some beginnings, so now I'm gonna start mixing everything with each other. Um, just to continue to layer on
the more layers that I get, the more they start mixing up with one another. And sometimes I'll start coming up with something that I think is what is my favorite, you know, and I'll try to make, maybe, maybe pull that out more. I kind of like that little part that has the yellow in it, but I'm going to mix it with some white, lighten it up. You know, at the end of this, you'll just be able to stand a little further away from it. And they'll all kind of start coming together more. I like that brown in there. Okay, so now you see, I, this is not, I'm not intending this to be some kind of fabulous abstract piece. This is just kind of a background that makes me happy. I'm just gonna kind of scrape things together. I'm just kind of creating a variety of, of neutrals. We'll put a little more white in there. We'll get a little bit more light color in there. So anyways, I'll usually just pick a few colors that I like, kind of come together with it, and have some fun. And then there's a little bit of purple and maybe just kind of remember my background that was back in there. All right, so. There's a background. That is a background that's pleasing to me. And so I'm gonna stop and I'll save the colors that I have mixed up here because I'll be able to use those to mix with the colors for my painting itself in order to get some color harmony. So we'll set those aside and, uh, and we'll start on the painting itself, which because I'm doing this in the palette knife, this doesn't really need to dry for me because I don't care if the colors mix together. I'm going to want it to mix together at the end of it anyways. I'm definitely going for a loose painting. So I just thought I'd kind of put an apple here and some cherries laying around and then maybe some shadows falling off of them. So that's kind of what I'm planning to um, to do so now I have in a kind of a big messy way let's see how I want to show this to you I guess this way would be the way I used it can you see it you can see most of it but let me move this over I'll move this over and show you what's on my palette and then I'll move the palette back and forth so you can see what I'm using so what I have squeezed out on my palette is this is cad cadmium red light you can hardly see it because this is one of my favorite colors, uh, along with the dioxazine purple. So, Cab Red Light. This is for my cherries. This is a um, quinacridone magenta. There it is. And then next to it, that's a little bit darker, is the alizarin crimson hue. This right here is a bunch of uh, uh, heavy gloss gel. I just happen to have Liquitex. I have uh, different brands that are in my cabinet. This is just what I uh, pulled. And then for my apple over here, 
what I squeezed out was a little bit of green gold and that actually is a cobalt green which I probably would have mixed well I like that green gold just I just use this for just quickness and convenience so that I can get this whole thing done in the time frame that we have and then that is another that this over here is just another uh, bunch of the titanium white and then that right there is another glob of the uh, gel so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, uh, I'm gonna end up mixing a lot of this together to get the shading and shadows that I want so what I you know you could sketch it out usually you know probably I would but I don't really feel like I need to do a lot of sketching on this and I need to look at it and I think I see maybe a little bit more dark value down there so I'm gonna orient it this is the bottom from where I'm sitting and that's the top and so my general uh, plan you know for this painting is to have a is to have an apple you know there and then I'm gonna have you know just some cherries uh, hanging around it and so that's 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 my sketch <laughs> right there that's enough you know for me so the cherries I'm gonna have some fun with the cherries I'm gonna move this so you can see what I'm doing because uh, I had to practice this a lot of times on a uh, you know just a, just a, a pad to try to get the movement of my hand I want to put the the cherries in first just because of this is just really fun so if I'm kind of in my mind's eye my light is coming from that direction I want to have my light kind of over there so watch what I'm gonna do I'm taking this is an oval one inch oval palette knife and I'm gonna load it up with different colors so I got a scoop of cad red a smaller scoop of the magenta can you see it? And an even smaller scoop of the alizarin crimson. Now I need to kind of pick this up because for me this is a a, a a technique kind of a deal. I'm gonna twist it around to get what I want. So here goes. That may end up being a strawberry because <laughs> this is hard for me to do and keep this. I'm not holding is this at the angle. Let me do the next one and I'll come back to that one here in a minute. So I'm make sure you can see as I move over this way, I have more of the crimson. Okay, that looked better. All right. So my first one is going to become a strawberry because of the way that it looks. So I'll get more yellow on that. So this now, just because of my technique issue, I'm gonna get some white. And make sure and indicate where the light is hitting that. And I can just kinda scrape in where I wanna make sure and get anything. if you can tell that that's got some good texture coming up off of it all right so there I've thrown those in and now I'm gonna throw in an apple and 
and I kind of think oh that's what I forgot to do I forgot to mix in my my medium with them that's why they weren't that's why they weren't doing what I wanted them to do get a little bit more red I told you I haven't done many demos and I don't feel great about doing this all right let me come back now did you see I grabbed that's my heavy gel gloss I couldn't figure out why I wasn't loving that okay by whipping up that gloss now I've got some height let's try that again Okay, that I like better. So let's grab a little bit more crimson hue. That strawberry looks good. I'm gonna put a little more And again, I don't need this. This is, I'm mixing this up. I don't really need it to be all mixed thoroughly up together. So I'm just gonna give that another try and make sure that that is looking, yeah. Okay, see the, see the texture there? That's what I'm going for here. So I'm gonna give this guy a little more texture too. So I'm, I'm taking a little bit of, now these are just all just full, full, full of gloss. Now, see how, can you see how much is on my palette knife there? Okay, so I'm gonna give this guy a little another boost. All right, yeah, that's what I'm wanting. Okay. So I got just a little more gel And I'll give another boost to that other cherry. So, okay, I'm glad I figured that out before I get too far into this. So now, okay, you see how much is on my knife? Just coming back. I, I really am rotating both my hands. There you go. Oh yeah. Okay, you're gonna wanna touch that when you see it. And it'll look delicious. All right, time for our apple. And so, light's coming here, so I want that lighter. And then I'm gonna end up down here where the shadows are, just mixing the greens with my reds to get kind of my shadow color. So I'm gonna start here by mixing my green gold with, uh, I'll come over here with, this is heavy gel gloss. I'm gonna mix that up and then I'm gonna scoop off a big bunch of that. Okay, so there's a bunch of green gold with heavy gloss. And then I'm gonna take, this is white, this is my Titan white. So I'll mix some of that with some white so I can have a really pretty, and you see how that just whips up, gets so thick? And I live for that. That is what I like to see, okay? And then just while I'm mixing, I think I'll just take some of my leftover. This is all just uh, uh, heavy gel gloss, and I'll go ahead and just mix my, um, that's cobalt green. I'm just gonna go ahead and get that mixed. So basically what I'm gonna, so these are all mixed. They had a little tiny bit of red in it, I don't care. Kind of with each stroke, I'm gonna mix some of the next color. I'll start with my light, get a little darker, get a little darker, start mixing the reds in. I can go back and grab some of my purple. And then, uh, okay, so 
We're doing good on time. Okay, so let me get started on this apple. So I'm gonna start here with my light color. And I could change knives, but think I feel okay. So I'm just gonna load her up. See how I kind of, you can kind of see my sketch mark that I, that I sketched in. It's just gonna start putting it on. Okay, I hope you could see that stroke. For my next stroke, I'll come, take a little of this light I was just using, mix it with a little of the next darker shade. I want it to look round. Can you see? I'm going to just do another bit. I'll do another of kind of about that color. Kind of getting more on the darker side. And I'll do another right there. And one more about that color, kind of where the, if the light's coming from here, <clears throat> that kind of medium color is gonna be there. And now I'm getting onto the shadow side of it. So first, I'll take some of that green I was already using because I want it all to be friends. And I'll mix in some of this cobalt green to darken that up a little bit. And maybe one more like that. Over here. And then, you know, that red of that, those cherries there are going to kind of kind of mix in there and kind of start making that shadow. I'm gonna mix that up where it's got a little bit of that reflected red in it. So we'll do that. I just pulled in a little bit more heavy gel gloss because I want it sticking up. That just is what I like to see. Okay, so all right. So there is an apple, and I may want a little Just make sure I've got a, I'm gonna make a little divot for my stem to be coming out. Okay, so I'm gonna need some stems and I'm gonna need some shadows. And so now I'm gonna pull my purple back in. 
to help make some pretty browns and also to give me some color harmony. And I think I probably am gonna have to pull out a little bit more of my purple, which is uh, just something I love. So, um, let's see, actually, why don't I first go ahead, since I've named that a strawberry, and give that some I'm scraping up my green. And I'm gonna just give it some, um, I'm just scraping up green And I've given that strawberry some greenery at the top of it. Okay, and so now I'm gonna want a stem on my apple. So I'm gonna come over here and grab some of my purple. I had some purple, some dark purple, and I had some lighter purple that I'm gonna scrape up. <clears throat> so I'll take this purple here and I'll mix it with some green over here and that ought to give me some brown, right? And I'm just gonna scrape some of this brown over there. So I want a light colored version of that for my Uh, stems so that needs a little more green in it to make it browner can you see that okay there you go okay so that I want it kind of purplish but not the same color as my background so I think we're pretty good that's a medium value and my backgrounds a pretty medium value so I'm gonna darken it up so that you can see it. So I'm kind of going to have my medium value stem and I've got a darker on the end of it. And let's just kind of get, let's see how I want these stems to go. We'll get one going that way. That's got the light brown with the purple on the end. We'll get this one going this way. And it still looks a little light. We'll take that green and put a little tip on the end of it and we'll get this one going this way. And then we need one for the apple. So I'm gonna let that, can you see? Okay, come out that away. maybe a little bit of a and then I'm gonna start mixing up some shadows so I'm gonna take all the rest of my dark purple and I'm gonna kind of just mix it with these other colors there's some red And I'm definitely going to just, now I'm going to just start, you just get the big palette knife. Now I'm really just going to start scraping everything together. My shadows can kind of harmonize my colors. 
and just kind of look at it to see what kinds of shadows I think they might cast. Okay. So let's just try, I'm gonna get my smaller knife. just kind of just just throw some shadows underneath them Just kind of putting them in in a very imprecise way. Because my goal in this painting, I'm just kind of trying to my goal in this painting is 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 just is just to have some fun. So now that I sit and look at it, I suspect you've been looking at this thing upside down the whole time. Uh, and I don't know what to do about that. But now that's what I've ended up with. I've ended up with a um, apple with some cherries and a, and a strawberry. And... Um, I'm actually wanting to take those shadow colors and just continue to fill in some of my bottom part because I like the way that that looks. And I think what I would like to do, just looking at this, is take some white And maybe just play with with a little bit of that on the upper part now I'm just mixing Just mixing some of these colors that I've been using and I'm wanting to to see if maybe I add some of this on the top part It'll help.
So I just go back through it and I do a little value check and I want to just even out where I need to, or, or, or not really even out where I need to even out, show more contrast where I need more contrast. And I may want, I think my shadows just don't look dark enough, so I'm going to do a little bit of work with that. So I'm going to come back and deepen my shadows. Just to give the contrast that we need here. So it's not all the same value. And now, okay. I've taken my darks and I darkened them up. And so now what I'm feeling like I want to do is to take my lights and lighten them up just a bit also. So I just put a little bit more green, green gold. I'm going to mix it with my white and I'm going to add a couple of, of brighter spots. got a, uh, a longer skinnier knife. Okay. So, um, I'm just stop. So, What I have done, just to kind of summarize it all, is to paint a, um, I had a medium violet background. I took dioxazine purple, yellow ochre, 
burnt sienna and a Titan Mars pale along with a Titan white. And I scraped them uh, with no medium. I scraped them with a palette knife in just varying uh, patterns until uh, I just kind of felt like I had a neat looking, somewhat chaotic background, which was generally medium in value. Uh, which you can tell your value, you know, but just by squinting at it. Um, next, I uh, mixed Cad Red, uh, Quinacridone Magenta, and a Lazarin Crimson Hue. And first, I twirled them with my one inch oval palette knife and I was dissatisfied with how they looked. And then I remembered that I had forgotten to put my heavy body gel. And so I whipped them up with my heavy body gel. And the first one uh, that I didn't like the way it looked, I turned it into a strawberry. And, um, and then the others, I just literally turned the canvas counterclockwise at the same time as I turned my hand clockwise so that I would get this swirl, which would give me darks and lights within the strawberry. Uh, or excuse me, within the cherry. And um, then I painted the uh, apple with uh, green gold mixed with Titan white. And then I began to have less of the white in it. So the, those two are more strokes are more like just a green gold. And then I mixed a little cobalt green in and then I used, uh, I mixed some of the leftover reds from the cherries to kind of help add the shadows on that. Then I mixed the, um, some of the purple left from the background. And well, I used also some of that leftover green to make the stem on the strawberry. And then I made a brown from the green left from the apple, the reds and some of the purple from the background. I made some browns and so with that, I made some shadows and I made some stems and then I felt that the value of that was too medium and it mixed too much with the background and so at that point I uh, brightened up uh, well I first I took some purple and I deepened my shadows and then I took some of the light green and I uh, mixed that in with some white to add some highlights on the stems. And I added a little bit of green and white right there. Uh, and then I just went ahead and made more of a bottom part. I liked the original, that's the original shadow color, which um, I liked it so well, I just kind of expanded it to be more of the background that they're sitting on. And then I mixed that with some white to lighten up some of the top, just to make it more interesting. And then um, I probably took, I took a little bit of dark purple up there that I had used for the shadows just to make that stand out from the background and put a little divot of light there where the stem comes out. And that's it, that's the whole painting. Um, I, uh, sorry I'm not doing this live, but uh, it just didn't work out that way. So I invite you right now, um, if you wanna see some of my work, especially some of my palette knife work, I have a solo show up at the Bossier Arts Council um, East Bank Gallery. It's in the main gallery there. And it'll be up, they're open uh, 11 through five, Tuesday through Saturday. I wish you'd go by, cause I lost a week due to the ice show. And I, because of my lupus, I wasn't able to attend the opening reception. So I would love it if some people would would, would would get by. I'm I'm quite pleased with the show and, and, and I'm it's it represents the work that I've been doing throughout this pandemic. And um so please do go by and take a look. I used a lot of palette knife. I would say at least half of the work that's hanging there was done with a palette knife. And then um you can also see more examples of my work um on Facebook, Kathy with a C, Cobb, C-O-B-B, -B, Art, Kathy Cobb Art on Facebook. You can, or also you Kathy Cobb Art on Instagram. 
you actually can go to YouTube and uh, look for Kathy Cobbard and you'll see, I don't know, I've got four or five videos of just different things that I've done uh, that are up on my YouTube channel. I have a Kathy Cobbard YouTube channel and this video will go on it as well as I have four or five others that I've done previously. And um, uh, I guess really that's it. If you have questions for me, you also can email me, kathycobbart at gmail.com, and or you can put them in the comments below this video, either on my page or on the Shreveport Art Club page, uh, and I will be happy to go back and answer any questions that you have at the end of this. I want to thank Adina Helm for inviting me to do this demo. Um, a lot of this stuff that I'm fooling with is has been, I took a palette knife painting class. Well, actually, Susan uh, Duke came to the um, art club and gave us a palette knife painting class, and I liked it so well that I took a class from her for about a month over there to Gora Borealis before the pandemic began. And uh, what a blessing, because I really like the looseness of painting with palette knives. And, um, and then I took, during the pandemic online, I took a, uh, an online class with Patty Mollica, um, who has really been, you know, challenging me to, to just continue to try a lot of new things. And so this, this kind of is, these are some of the influences that, that kind of helped me put this work together. So anyhow, thanks very much for your time. And um, I hope that you all stay well and healthy. And I'm looking forward to when we can all get back together to meeting again soon. So thanks very much. Bye-bye.